Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again for a webinar from New Jersey City University, the Department of Educational Technology. Today, we're thrilled to have um, here conducting webinar is Dr. Chris Schamberg, my esteemed colleague. He is a prof professor in the Department of Educational Technology and the coordinator of our exceptional doctoral program in educational technology leadership. I've worked with Chris for a number of years. I've always been impressed by what he does. He seems to get ahead of the curve and uh, really is uh, share, sharing of his knowledge with everyone to a, to a degree that I think all of us truly appreciate. So Chris, today we're looking forward to learning more about Atlas TI. Thanks cool, for coming. Cool. Thank, thank you for having me. And uh, you know, program's only as good as the people who are in it and the students, so thank you all for being part of the EdTech family. Uh, all right, I'm going to uh, share my screen and I have a power. I have a little PowerPoint for about five minutes, ten minutes. About what we're going to do. Then I'm going to go into Atlas TI. I also have a, a folder with uh, that I'll share with you guys of all the material if you want to get started and play on your own. Um, all right, so let me share my screen. PowerPoint. Uh, everyone can hear me all right. I actually I look over to the side. I have another computer where I'm just uh, just a guest. So if you just Put your physical thumb up like that if uh okay good good thank you um all right it's just to make sure everyone's seeing what i see what i think they're seeing all right so today we're going over the power of words introduction to atlas ti qualitative analysis software um at the end, I have a little tiny URL here with my Dropbox folder that has a bunch of files you can play around with. One good thing about Atlas TI is they have a trial version that has all of the features of the full version. There's only one glitch. You can only work with 10 documents at a time. You can't go over that, but it's a great way to introduce it. They also have leases for students. Uh, Two-year lease is about $99, and I think there's a discount code where you can get it for $75. So if you want to get a, a student lease on it, if you like what you see, I would recommend, highly recommend it. All right, so the first thing I just want to talk about is Atlas TI is part of a family of softwares, uh, qualitative data analysis software, a QDA software, Deduce, Invivo, Mac QDA, there are others. Uh, there's one TAMS Analyzer, that's a free one that's available for Macs. Um, I'm not expert enough or I don't have enough experience with all of them. I did use Deduce for a while. Uh, I was a student. I, I thought it was okay. I, I think Atlas is much better than, than Deduce. But it's, I guess it's all on what you learn and what you're comfortable with. Um, the, a couple of things that are uh, undebatable about Atlas TI, it's been around for a really long time and it's very popular, which means there's a lot of supporting material. There's like a really good ecosystem for learning and training and books and workshops and videos on Atlas TI. And it is relatively easy to learn. If you dedicate five to 10 hours with like a, a workbook, and I'll show you some good ones at the end, you could you'll, you'll be a user. You'll hit a point where you're gonna be doing something and you, but that you didn't think you'd need qualitative data analysis software for, and you'd be like, oh, you know, this would be a good project. I, Atlas TI could really help me with this. So I think that's uh, something to keep in mind. Okay, so Atlas TI facilitates the analysis of qualitative data. So you can use any text, uh, Word documents. Uh, you would copy and paste like a web page into a Word document is probably, or a PDF, PDF files, video files, audio files and images. It integrates with um, uh, mapping applications. Uh, you can import from Twitter, Evernote, reference management software in Excel. And there's some really interesting things you could do with Excel. If you have a survey, you can import it and it organizes it for you as well. Um, here are some options. Free trial, if you just go to Atlas TI, they make the free trial pretty easy. Um, student licenses, six months and two years, uh, you could get a lease. Single user license is perpetual, so it, they'll supply all the updates and upgrades for you multi-user and campus licenses. So um, those are the options again. Uh, if you seem to like what you see today, I'm gonna to go over what we're gonna go, the objectives in a minute, but I would suggest getting this, uh, getting the free trial and seeing what, uh, seeing what happens. Now, 
there are some interesting differences between the Mac version and the PC version of Atlas TI. I'm, gonna, I'm using the Mac version for you. The basic principles are the same, but the interface is different. So at the end, I have different um, resources. If you're a Mac or PC, where you can go in detail about it. So just keep in mind that uh, if you are, are a PC person, what I'm showing you isn't gonna look exactly like what you see, but um, you, you'll be able to figure it out pretty easily. And again, there are a lot of resources to help you out. All right, so we're gonna begin a project. I'm gonna open up Atlas TI software in a second. Uh, I just wanna say there are three ways to begin a project. Start from scratch, open an existing project, an important existing project. We're gonna do the first two today. We're gonna to start, I'll show you how to start from scratch. Then I'm going to uh, import, let me just say, it's got a text from one of you here. I just wanna make sure it's not a problem. All right, now. Um, start from scratch, uh, we're gonna open an existing project and then I have, I, uh, export a project that I'll share with you guys. You can import and you can play around with it a little more. Again, the project files are cross-platform, so it doesn't matter if you have it on Mac or PC. You could open, close, save, share uh, between the Mac and PC. Uh, they just look, the interfaces look different. Hey, before we get started, any questions? Um, you could unmute yourself and uh, ask, ask away, or I don't see the chat box here. Let me just open it up. Uh, yeah, why don't you just unmute any questions? Just chime in. No? All right, if I miss a chat, Dr. Zeger, could you just uh, chime in and let me know if uh, someone has a question? Thanks. All right, so let me open this. Oh, actually, let me go over here. The, I just want to hold myself accountable here. Here are the things we're going to learn today. How to start a new project. You're going to um, learn what entities are. Those are the four building blocks of a project. We're going to import documents. We're going to open code, show you different ways of coding, memo writing work with documents one-on-one, -on -one, work with documents at, a, at the same time, write a memo. Then we're gonna work on an existing project. We're gonna go over codes, quotes, documents, memos. Again, those are the four building blocks. We're gonna do grouping. We're gonna code an image, code a video. Then we're gonna look at the, these two, actually generating reports. This is one thing I definitely wanna have time for. This is probably the most, uh, I don't know, it's, it's the real payoff in a lot of ways. Then I'm gonna mention some other tools. So let me start up with, let's see, I'm gonna close the PowerPoint. I'm going to, okay. Okay, you should look it up for Atlas TI. Open. All right. So this is what it looks like. Uh, the software, we're gonna create a new project. Uh, let's call it, um, I've got some files ready. We're going to call it School Shut Down Live. What I've done is I've got some um, survey data and some uh, newspaper articles about the school, the shutdown, and we're just going to crunch that. It's kind of timely. Um, we're doing research on it at EdTech. All right, okay. I have to reshare one second. All right, there you go. So when you open up Atlas TI, could everybody see that everyone sees the screen? You could just give me the thumbs up if you want. Thumbs up, thank you. All right, um, this is the Project Explorer. That's what it's called. Um, here on the left, you have the navigator. And here's your, your work window. Uh, at the top here, these are your entities managers. And I mentioned these are the four building blocks of the project. You have documents, right? That's not a mystery. That's every thing you pull in. Quotations, those are sections that you highlight and pull out. Codes, that's the, those are the things that do all the work for you in Atlas TI. And memos are little reflective notes you write for yourself. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import some documents, all right? Um, like anything, there are a bunch of ways to do it. You go to project, uh, go to documents, import documents. There's this little plus sign here. We're just going to import documents. Um, okay, so 
uh, let, let me pull them all and this will take this might take uh, 30 seconds or so but I got a video uh, I've got two pictures of a classroom I've got three articles but one is a survey data so I'll show you that so I'm just gonna import them so this will take about 15 seconds you can see my import I have a little import sign on here so it's it's, it's working on it uh, the first thing we're going to import our survey results, the New York Times did a profile, they asked high school students to explain uh, how remote learning is working for them. So they have 33 um, uh, interviews with high school students and they, they excerpted them and they lightly edited them. So we're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at you know the school shutdown from students' perspective. All right, so you can see here in the navigator, I have documents, codes, memos, networks. So we're gonna open up a document. Okay, we're gonna open up article what students are saying about the shutdown, about remote learning. Yes, I saw a question that, can you import audio? Yes, audio is also a, uh, but the, the techniques are similar with video and audio, so I thought I'd just show one. All right, so here's an article. Uh, I'm gonna get down, it's 33 interviews uh, like this, so Owen, uh, Midget, Norfolk, Hannah, Nashville, Emily, Lawrenceville. Um, so what I want to do is let's just go through and, and try coding them. I'm going to show you different ways to code. Uh, so I'm going to need you guys to bark things out for a second, but we're going to do open coding where we're just going to associate ideas, themes, concepts to uh, quotes and lines in the passage. Now there are different approaches to coding. We could do open coding where you just kind of go over it a few times and uh, revise your coding system and, you know, kind of intuitively. Um, or you could have a, a set of codes you start with, like a priori coding, where say we're looking for technology and um, emotional connection or emotional distress or emotions. And we could just code for that. So we're going to do open coding just to be a little, uh, have some fun with it. Um, so let's look at the first sentence here, and we're going to play along. This is a uh, participatory. Uh, everyone can unmute uh, and just, or if you have something to say, unmute. Let's look at this. School is a place for building friendships, learning responsibility, and getting an escape from the house. But it seems that the uh, coronavirus has taken that all away from us. All right, so let's just take that little excerpt. Anyone want to chime in and chat or just unmute yourself? What, what kind of ideas come to your mind as far as coding that? What would you say? Well, I would associate that with what? Anybody? Feel free to chime in. Community. Oh, I'm sorry, I said it? Community. Community, all right, great, I love it. So there are three ways to code. You can right click and add code and it'll add community. Isolation. Uh, isol very good, isolation. Lots of freedom. Freedom, I love it. Okay. So we add the codes. And you see, this is the quotation, that part here, and these are the three codes. All right, great, you guys are really getting the hang of it. Um, for me, I love getting to see my friends every day in the school environment. Uh, now it's taken away from me. I realized that now that school was my main source of communication with people. Now it was, I feel as though as I'm losing friendship. Um, friendships I had at school since we can't go anymore. All right, so let's take this hunk. It seems like a unique idea. Also, it's more of an art than a science, like how big your quote is. Do you want to quote sentence, phrase, word, a, a group of, a group of uh, sentences? We'll, we'll play around with that too. Okay, uh, Ed Cody. So, Anybody else? What kind of code? And what codes? I'm sorry. Relationships. Relationships. Very good. Relationships. Loss. I'm seeing loss. Loss. Okay. Very good. Uh, anybody else? I'm just out of the way. Depression. Could it be depression? Uh, yeah. Very good. Um, I know. Also, look. You guys are really good. You guys are getting very. Uh, deep with this, which is great. Uh, you could also be very superficial and say, Community. talk about friendships. Freedom, yeah. friendship. Friendships. Um, communication. Communication. 
missing, missing. Well, we have a lot, it is good. So we have two codes that are similar. Later, I'm gonna show you how to merge codes. Okay. All right, so now we have that. Now, one thing you're gonna notice here on my uh, left hand in the navigator, the codes are pop populating up. Wow, wow. So, um, and now do we, all right, let's use a code again. So let's, let's go over here. Uh, school has also touched responsibility. I had a schedule when going to classes, when to wake up and go to bed. Now I have no reason to schedule. Uh, I'm going to bed and waking up much later than I used to. Structure. Right. Structure, very good, structure. So I showed you one way I was right clicking quote, but you can go to add quoting this way. Structure. Uh, anybody else? Oh, responsibility. Very good. Scheduling. Very good. Scheduling. Discipline. Good. How about isolation again? Very good. Oh, I like that. Very good, Dr. Z. So, what I love about that is that when you start typing a code, you'll see that it starts to um, autocomplete, which is very helpful. So, you know you have it. Also, you, now uh, a third way of coding, you could right click, you could um, go to your menu, or you can do, you could drag and drop, which is kind of helpful too. Uh, let me go over two more things with coding and then I'll show you a couple of other uh, things you could do. I have a full version where I coded this whole thing. You don't see it, my computer's frozen a little bit, so I'm buying some time here. My world, my uh, uh, thing is, my spinning wheel's going. So just give me a second. All right. So yeah, so there you go. You could also pull it over. So say we wanted to, I'm just gonna do this missing. I pull it over here and I drop it in. And we'll do it. Also what you could do is you could do these, uh, these things over here, this type of code. I'm just gonna do this real quick. This isn't a keeper. This is an experiment. You go over here and quick coding. What quick coding does, it will add the codes from that you previously used. So if we quick code that, um, it's gonna add the last code we used. Uh, in vivo coding, that's a type of coding, I think it's more uh, popular grounded theory, where it, it uses the phrase. It, so it codes, it codes using the quote. So you can use that too. Dr. Schamberg, will codes from other articles that you've done previously show up or is it just per document? Very good. If anything that you, all the documents um, in your project will be linked by the code. You can merge projects um, and you can bring other documents in, but the code is specific to uh, the project. Again, like you could, if you go here, uh, you can merge with projects. So if you have another one, uh, so if you have two projects, but that's very good. The codes are local to the project. Quick question, Dr. Schomburg. Yes. Before we move, why do we need to code? Oh, that's really good. So if you're doing qualitative research, uh, one thing you're going to do is look for themes uh, and analysis of a whole bunch of documents. So say, mm. all right, you're trying to say what are the what's the relationship between technology and emotions? Um, this is just a kind of a research question off the top of my head that students are experiencing. Uh, or the, what are the emotion, what's the emotional toll of the school shutdown on students? So you would say, I mean, how could you answer that research question? Well, you can give a survey or you can do interviews or you can do some combination. If you do interviews, um, you would take all these things out and you would code, you look for themes and consistency in the analysis in the codes, and then you would uh, then you'd write up a report on it. Yes, very good. Yes, so I ask this question because you know, if what we are doing, it seems like we are trying to, you know, make like a meaning of uh, the article. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No, it's uh, that's a great question, and uh, Dr. Carnahan uh, does a really good job. Oh, actually, if you'd like. I do have some uh, articles. I'm just putting together a little lit review for some of the research students on uh, kind of good examples of qualitative, different variety of qualitative research. And I'll share it actually in, the, in our summer course. Mm -hmm. All right, and actually, hopefully, as we get further with this, you could see some of the applications uh, 
inner research as we go through. Uh, let me make sure I think I got, uh, oh yeah, all right. So there are a couple other things we could do here. We could, so you got coding, the basic procedures of how to code. Um, so you could also write memos. So say you notice something, uh, memos are ways to sort of, well, it's a memo, to, to um, like note to self. So say I wanna write a memo, say I'm like, oh, you know, this, this theme of isolation is really important. I'm gonna explore that. Uh, you can go to memos, uh, or go here, memo, new memo, and so I'll say, Isolation is a growing theme. I wonder if students felt this way before the stress of school. How much is new? How, how much continued the continuation? All right, so you're like, oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna, and I'll call this memo. Let me see, I can't really see the box. Yet. I'll call this memo uh, isolation. New or read. All right, so I just named the memo. Uh, named the memo, and now I'm going back to my code. See, I'm gonna go back to my document. Oh, also, all the documents are open up here, so I'm gonna go. I can click here. And now I'm going to take this memo and I'm going to associate it with a code. I could drag it over to, to the, whoops. I'll open it. Take this memo and drag it over to isolation. And now it's associated with that code. Another thing you can do with codes, let me move the other way. Dr. This is very Ross, important. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, can you link that to multiple codes? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, also, that's a really that's a great question. Uh, you can make, and I'm going to get to it uh, in about 15, 10 minutes. What you could do is with the codes, you could associate codes. So you could say these codes are related. This code contradicts uh, this code. This code is a part of that code. So when we go to merging codes, I'll show you that. That's a great question. Yeah, and you can do the same with memos. Um, now, comments are interesting on a code. So say um, discipline. At some point, you might want to say you're, you're going by your instinct and say, well, I'm going to make discipline. Discipline uh, kind of is associated with the code discipline. The code discipline is associated with, you know, consistency, habits. And it's um, you know regular, regular routines. So you can write yourself a little memo on uh, a little comment rather, and that will show up on every code with discipline. So once you do something for one instance of a code, it repeats. It it just duplicates across all codes. Now let me give you a quick view of the different entities. I think we should have enough here. So if you go to, you could manage each one of the entities separately also. So codes, we're gonna do more of this uh, later, but you can look at all your codes and you could bounce among them. So here are the codes you have. Uh, this is how many times they're used. Now we've used missing three times, isolation two times, well, that's pretty interesting. We can look at our documents in, in detail, close up on our documents. Uh, we're only, we only, we've only got one now, but, oh, okay, your window's not popping up, I see. Okay, I got to share the window. I didn't know that. All right. I'm going to say, good thing I have the, suits, the student screen here that didn't come up. I'll save that for later because I'm going to have to switch screens for that. All right. Uh, what else can we do in this window? Um, well, let me move on to another project. Let me move on to a full project, but this is the basics. Again, I'll show you later, but these are the answers. You have documents, quotations, codes, memos. Let me see if I covered everything for this. Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do is project. Uh, let me close this. I'm going to close everything. 
Uh, I don't, I don't want to save it. Okay, now I'm going to open up a new project. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can. Dr. Schamberg, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Oh can yeah, go ahead. Reload a code list that you plan to use for a project. Yeah, you can. You can import it. Uh, there's a way. You just have to format. It just you can write it all in an Excel file and import the code list. Yeah, and you and can, can share. And you have subcodes. Yes. You well, you could split a code and you could associate the codes. Um, it's it's for all intents and purposes. Yes, you could have subcodes. So I'll show you that when we go to um, the next project. But two good questions. Yeah. You guys anticipated what's, uh, what's coming up. Any other questions? Yeah, actually, I have Q&A on my little to-do list here. Uh, now, what I did was I've, uh, I took this, those documents and I coded them up. So we're going to go over that now. All right. So here it is. I've put about 138 uh, quotes on six documents. Um, and we're going to get right to it. I'm going to have to switch the window view a little bit. I just noticed that. Oh, actually, can I share my whole desktop? Wait, let me just see something. You can uh, share all of your window and any of the screens that come up will show. All right. Yeah. yeah so I got to do that. One second. That whole screen. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Share my entire desktop. All right. All right, this should work. Let me see if this works here. Uh, yeah, all right, great, perfect. All right, so here we are. And now, oh, actually, one thing I wanted to show you guys how you can work. So when you're doing this, you're working one document. You can work one document at a time. So let me open up the document we were just looking at, what students are saying. And right here, I coded it, um, you know, Low quality, hard to escape, benefits, overwhelm, pros and cons, grades, benefits. Now, again, coding is like a, a repetitive process or an iterative process. So what you'd want to do is I'd go through this a couple of times. I'd go through the codes. I'd merge codes. I'd separate codes. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you know, here's uh, what's this here. I noticed this one here. Um, Disbelief, time management, grades, technology, stressful. Uh, digital divide came up a lot. So now we're going to go into a little more detail about coding. Let me see what's next on our list. Uh, oh, yeah, the entities manager. Now that I got that. So now we'll go to, I'll briefly show you this. You can go to your quotations manager, and it has everything you've everything you've quoted and then you can read them you'll see them at the bottom they'll show up and the codes on each passage that are coded shows up too uh, most of the work you're probably going to do in your codes manager so you go to your codes codes manager now here are all the codes now one thing you might want to do is well Okay, so what, what do you think you'd want to do first? If you've coded a document or a bunch of documents, what's one thing you, you might want to do? Anybody? Um, organize them. Yeah, organ very good, organize, great. That's, that's exactly what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll look at, um, we'll put them in order of appearance, right? So you just organize them and the code that comes up 23 times is um, technology no, no, and then schedule. So no surprises there. Uh, digital divide, teachers, social, socializing. All right, now this is interesting. I kind of set this up for, for you, but when I was coding, sometimes I'd use the word social, sometimes I'd use the word socializing, and you can click it, and you can see all the documents that I've uh, coded. So I had two pictures I coded, I'll get to that later. Um, but here's 530, oh, also the navigator, I'll let me pull that forward gives a number to your documents. So you know this is in 5.30, that's in uh, document five, which is the article we just we were just working on. The picture is, uh, is two, so you can kind of look at that. So you're like, well, then you can read the quotes, that, the quotations that you marked for socializing, 
You can read the ones you mark for social, and you can say, well, they're kind of similar. Let me merge them, all right? So all you do is you take socializing, you pull it, you pull it over social. Now I, you, can see the, you can see the options here. And this, uh, I think uh, Jennifer had this question and Dr. Z answered from the chat. We can merge so they're all equal, um, or you could do, you could have a relationship. Socializing contradicts. Socializing is a social. Socializing is associated with social. Social causing part of a property of, or uh, no name social. Uh, you, could, you could edit that. So we're gonna merge them, just a plain merge. We'll do something else later. So now we got rid of socializing and we have social. Uh, let me do another one. Uh, one was, um, let me see. I saw one before, I was like, this will be good. Um, resources, oh, has resources, okay. So now we have has resources here. So we have two, two quotes with that. And up here we have digital divide at the top. So these are, and let's look at the quotes as someone whose family is financially stable, even in districts. So these are people who have, who have resources. So let's move this up to digital divide. And, but we're gonna show an association with it. Uh, has resources, I don't say it contradicts, I would say is part, is part of the digital divide because some people have resources. Uh, so now you can kind of map out some relationships. Um, you can also rename codes. Uh, and what I'm gonna do first, you could go here, you could do right click, you could, um, well, if you click inside one, you could rename. Uh, you could AP and AP test, have AP and AP test. We might want to merge these. So you can go through and just do some basic merging. You could also do, I think someone asked this, you could also split them. So let's go to technology. Uh, we could right click again, you can, or you can go to code. And let's go to split. Split codes. And you're like, well, as I was reading these through, right, as I was reading these through, I noticed some are, I don't know, say online. Also, what you can do too is have a little prefix. So I'm gonna add code and they give it for you technology, online, add. And then what you do is you go through each code and you're like, well, this is more online, this, this. You can learn this. And as you go down, you're splitting the code. I'm just doing it off the top of my head. I'm not really reading it through, mm. but um, that's how you would split a code. And then you just up here. Your window's block. Let me just. Your window's blocking my. Uh, too many things on there. Then you go to split codes, and then it'll take those two. Now, one good thing about this is that um, when you do it, I, I let me do it alphabet name, technology. You'll see them here now. Technology, technology online. And that's a good trick when you're coding to have little, little prefixes like this because then you could, they kind of group together, but you could also group them. So let's, I'll show you how to group codes real quick. So let's do code, um, how about stressors? That's a good, that's a good one. So we could add a code group, add group. Uh, we'll call it stressors. And then we could add, let's see, AP tests, <coughs> anxiety, um, changing curriculum. And then you have those in that group. Uh, all right, I'm gonna show you uh, what I wanna show you. Let me see, I, there are a couple other things I think you should, uh, mean, all right, grouping. Oh, actually, let's go to networking. This is really cool. Uh, and then reporting is really good too. Excuse me, Dr. Schamberg, a quick question before you move from there. When you're putting your codes together by relationship, as an example, if one of the codes says this is associated with another code, yeah. and then you start grouping codes, what happens with those relationships? They stay together. The, the relationships is 
kind of like a little more of a kernel. It's a little more of a core element, like they always say. Uh, the groups are, a little, are, are kind of a bigger thing, a bigger so way. If you're defining two codes together and you only pull one of those codes into the group, the other code will also automatically, as, as a result of the relationship it has, be part yeah, of exactly. the Yeah, exactly. That relationship will be identified, but it won't be pulled into a group. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've never used it, but I think that's what smart grouping does. It'll bring in the code and the, uh, and the associated ones. Excellent. There are other questions for you in the chat. Sure. I, actually, I, let's see, get to, let me just see if I can see. I can't see the chat. So, oh, wait, I got to get up. Sure. Actually, I'm having a little, oh, actually, let me use it here. I got two computers going here. Uh, chat. All right. Okay, so code everything can work. Yes, a word. Yes, we could do a word, a word. Does the person need to code everything? Um, yes, you could do words, finds that. That's, can you, Dr. Can do that. Chamber, can you yeah. just repeat the question when yeah, you're answering? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to think as I go through. Uh, does, the per does the person need to code everything or can you put in a word or a phrase and the program finds a document? Yes. Uh, does Atlas have visualization similar to NVivo? There's some visualization. I'm going to get on that next. Um, word clouds, no. Um, but you do have a word cruncher that I'll show you in a second. Um, word clouds, no. Case studies, changes. Um, for case studies, can you use Atlas to see changes, differences, and similarities over time? I'm sure you can. I'm not exactly sure. I think the technology would allow if, you, if you're coding that way. So I, I for me, the basic building block of Atlas TI is codes and the relationships among the codes. So that's a good question. Uh, love the relationship option. All right, I'm gonna go on and uh, I, I hope I answered everyone's question. Uh, all, right. all right, so now what I'm gonna do is go over, um, let me go to the, um, the navigator here. So we'll go to codes here. And now what I want to show you is, let's see if I can get technology. Oh, actually a digital divide since we worked on that one. The digital divide. Now I'm going to right click it and uh, I'm going to open a network. So here's where you can visualize. So we had our digital divide code and has resources is a part of that code. So visually you're seeing uh, what, what we put, what we put um, the association we made in our codes. What we could also do here is, this is what I like, if you right click digital divide, you could open up add co-occurring codes. Now this is pretty helpful. These are codes that show up in the same quotes as digital divide. So it's going to put them there. Now you can add associations that will stick with the code. So paper packets. So let's go to paper packets and we're going to say we coded that. Uh, I know that Dr. S, I'm sorry, can you just repeat that last sentence that you just said? If you right click the codes, it shows up with oh, whatever yeah. was okay. attached to digital divide? Yeah, so if you right click, I did already, add co occurring codes. Can you see that? So when we were coding any, any quote that I put digital divide, it's pulling up the quotes, the codes rather, that were part of that same quote. Remember when we, we would code something and we'd have like four codes in one quote? Does everybody, could you raise your thumb or remember we did that? You made your point. Yeah, so these, are, I'll go back and show you that in a second. These are the um, other codes that were part of that co quote. So this is helpful for, oh, paper packets. Yeah, so anytime digital divide was, was a section that had digital divide coded, paper packets was coded too. So now you could um, make a relationship there. Um, paper packets um, is part of digital divide. Uh, 
technology. So you can go, you can go on like this and you can eliminate some, you can say, well, this isn't part of the visualization. Uh, and you can get sophisticated with, with this. And these are better other ways, visual ways to associate codes. All right, I've got, there are three things I wanna show in like 15 minutes and I wanna leave some time for questions. Uh, again, what you've been really, your questions have been great and your coding was really good, um, great. Uh, this is just an overview, a preview. What I recommend is that, again, if I'll give you some resources at the end. If you spend, download the free trial, spend five to 10 hours uh, doing the exercises, you'll, you'll be really good. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be good at this. Um, so let's go to a, let's go to a, let's go to an image first. Okay, I coded this one. I started coding this one already. We'll open it up. All right, so you can code an image. What you do is uh, say you're doing something visual. Say you're doing some ethnography. You're like, well, what's going on in this picture? Well, uh, I looked at the design, the furniture, lecture. These kids are socializing, right? Um, more social, more socialization. I like this and you know, let's say, um, right click, um, add code, uh, looking into, into camera. So again, you could just code as much as you want. And now these will, will come on, um, uh, these will come up and associate with all the other codes you made in the text. For example, if I click social, click the code social, we could, add, we could add comments in here. And if we go to the code manager, social, social, and we click on and we click it on it, it gives us every document, every quotation, every document that has social. Now, if you want to go to back to that document, for example, like, oh, what is this? You click it and it'll open it up to the section that quoted. So everything's very interactive. Let me do video real quick. And then what I want to show you is, um, and everything's open here. So I'm going to close a few of these in the navigator. Uh, actually, let me show you one other thing too that's pretty interesting. What you could do is usually you're working at documents one at a time. So, uh, article, let's see, let's see, let's see this article. So if you had, you could have two articles and you could work on them. I like to do this. You could work, say you have two interviews and you're looking, you could code them at the same time too. So here's our, uh, what students say, here's another one. And then you could say, well, I'm making this up a little room here. Hide. Hide that. And then you could uh, you could code at the same time. You could do, oh, the access digital divide. Where else is digital divide? And then you just grab digital divide. And you could bring it over here. And you can do two at the same time. So that's pretty helpful too. Uh, let's do a video and then I want to show you the reports. Uh, video, we'll do quick because the reports are really important. Uh, so if you have a video you want to code, this is a little uh, video from Google. It's, it's all material here is to so we'll play it. Tell me when you're ready to film. Can everybody hear it or no? Yes. One can do anything. She wants to do something. She figures out a way to do it. We never, ever made a big deal about her being white. I have one to. All right, so right there, you can take a section and you can code it. So they mentioned it being blind. So I've got to highlight this and I'm going to code. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody else does, we just might need to figure out a way to do it. Add coding, you know, uh, household, household work, uh, getting ready. Or school. 
And then you can add that. And again, that goes into all your code managers. So those codes are associated. Or say we had one, um, I don't know, we didn't, I'll go to this section here. Just keep right up with her cited here. Okay, so say equity. Uh, and I'm gonna add just the uh, add coding, digital divide. And now it's added with that. Um, so yeah, coding and audio. Uh, someone had a question before, can you do audio? Yeah, you can import audio and it looks the same except it doesn't have the video. Uh, let me show you two things that I think are really important. Uh, close some of these up. We'll open up the um, code manager. Uh, one or two things that are really good, if you wanna look at, so let's select, um, let's select all the codes. Actually, let's go to the quotation manager. This would be easy. Uh, let's look at all the quotations or all the documents. Let's look at all the documents. So, so you go to Documents Manager and we're looking at all the documents. And let's highlight all the text documents. Two text documents shift. And we want to do the word cruncher. Someone asked about this before. So analysis, uh, word cruncher. Well, okay, I have to click them again. One, two, three. So it crunches all the words. But now look, it's got a lot of, it's got numbers, it's got and, and. We can exclude words from a stop list. So a stop list is common words, and, but, or. And now we're back to, now let's go to count. Mm. School, students, these are the most popular words. So. This is a good way if you want to start before you code, just to see what words pop up in your codes. You can, it's the equivalent of a word cloud without, uh, with a little more precision and, um, you know, a, a, little, a little more of a list. Quick question, Dr. Schomburg. Yes. Are we going to use uh, these numbers, this data? Because uh, actually I'm wondering, quant uh, qualitative, basically, uh, research is not about data. So I'm wondering if we are going to use these numbers, this data, actually. Well, no, I think this is a good, for me, I think it depends on the type of what your research method is. But uh, I think if you're gonna code, this might be a good way to start, um, start thinking about your codes, like what, what words are popping up f frequently. Uh, again, you could do a lot of things with it. You could ignore it, you could use it. Um, uh, something, some, you might get a surprise that comes up, a word might be in the top 10 that you didn't expect. Uh, it's just a feature I think that is important to know. Uh, but again, its importance is going to be based on your research method. Thank you. Uh, the next part I'm going to show you is really, I think this is the last thing I want to end on, is the, um, let's open up your codes, the reports manager. Now I think this is where, you, so if you were doing something else, just pay attention now because this is really important. Um, let's organize, okay, so here are our most popular um, codes, right? And I want to write a report. I want to start my paper, right? So I'm going to take the top, uh, or I want to do a different type of analysis. I want to take a next step of analysis. I'm going to take the top 10, uh, 10 codes, and I'm going to write a report on it. So I go here, export as report. Now here's what's really good. So nothing here yet. I haven't clicked anything off. So I want to show um, the quotations. So, and I want to show the content. And I want to show the linked codes. Uh, and I want to show the linked memos. So now, what you have here is basically the beginning of a paper. So if I was writing some research on this, this would be really important to me. You, you get your code technology, you find out it's a part of one-on-one, -on -one, and then you get the quotes, uh, the quotations that, it, that it's in. So you can really start, here's where your the um, kind of, I don't say abstract, but the under the hood of the codes and the relationships actually start to look like a paper, start to look like, you know, a thing written over time. Wow. Very good. And one thing I would recommend for this, this is really helpful. If you want to practice Atlas TI on something that you're probably familiar with already and see how it goes. If you're doing a lit review and you have PDFs, 
or actually you can have anything, PDFs, web pages, anything. Uh, try coding a lit review because you could have like 10, 10 articles and then you're like, wow, this, this, this is really good research on, you know, online learning. This is a good one on motivation. And then it'll combine the documents and you can, it's, it synthesizes your work in a very user-friendly way. So you can print it, save it, I'm gonna hit cancel. Um, let me say think, oh, I wanted to look at um, some tools to mention. You can import tweets, you can import survey data from Excel, you can import codes. Uh, it has something I didn't go into it, um, geotagging features, uh, this bibliographic software that it works with as well. Uh, if you want to, I've, I've got, I've exported this project in, so it's in one file. If you open up the trial version, you can grab it and um, open it up. Uh, any questions? Uh, let me let me close up Atlas TI, and then I'm going to just go back go to Zoom. Yes, Doctor Schomburg, can you use the result of your code for references? Like, if you have, I want to write a paper, right? Then I quote some article, and the result, like what you just show, uh, can I use them for my? Uh, Bibliography. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It integrates well with bibliographic software. And one little way to kind of uh, a saving device is if you highlight and, and quote, say you're reading an article and you highlight and quote the uh, uh, the reference, right? Uh, it'll it'll import with your with your quote. So you could actually save a little time in typing and have the reference, you know, the APA citation, cited with your quote. So yeah, it, it does work that way. Here, let me just stop sharing. Thanks. Get back on screen. Thanks. Uh, all right, any other questions on Atlas TI? I know it was a lot. Oh, let me just go over this last part. One second. I think I'm still sharing my screen. Um, yeah, if you have questions, I'm gonna open a chat on my other window here. So if you have any, just let me know. Dr. Schamberg, you said that uh, it does create the citation. Is that updated with seventh edition or? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a good question. It, it integrates with uh, other bibliographic software. So if the other software is um, up, upgraded, um, you know, I'm more of a copy and paste guy. I think if you write it once yourself, the correct time, uh, seventh edition, okay. it will, uh, uh, that's, that's the best way to do it. Uh, okay, maybe one second, let me share my screen and then I just wanna show you, go through some resources. Okay. All right. This is the finale. Okay. So, uh, some further reading. This book, um, Quality of Data Analysis with Atlas TI. It's about sixteen bucks on um, Amazon Kindle. Uh, so it's definitely worth it. If you even want to save the money, the website. Um, oh, it didn't show up here. I'll, I'll let me update this. This isn't a Dropbox. I'll update this. The student resources. Uh, there's a website. I should. I didn't put the link here. Um, is like chapter by chapter, and you could you know you could do it without paying the sixteen bucks for the book. The book is helpful. Um, Atlas TI uh, has learning. They have a lot of free free webinars. There are live webinars and have a lot of uh, other material. Actually, the Charmez book has a lot, it's about coding for grounded theory, but it's got a lot of interesting stuff for um, uh, just coding and, and research and qualitative research. It's the sort of qualitative research of qualitative research, I say, think. She's, it's the most um, rigorous, but the most very intuitive, very qualitative. Uh, okay, so just resources I used in a project. If you want to know, I tried to I put references and all the pictures were Creative Commons. Um, again, I'll get you that website. You could go to this link. Where is it? Oh, yeah. So if you go to tinyurl.com slash NJCU Atlas TI, I've got the folder with the PowerPoint. So if you just take away that one web address, you'll have everything you need for this. Any questions, you know, you can email me, you know where I am. Um, always go to our website and 
I think all you guys are on Facebook. You guys talk about preaching to the choir. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you're all familiar faces. So any, any final questions before we wrap it up? Let me just open the chat up for a second. Basically, excuse me, I have a question, Dr. Shamba. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. When you are using Atlas TI, you know, yeah. to do uh, quantita uh, qualitative analysis, yeah. your goal actually is, you know, to provide, a, to do a survey or what, if I see? Well, you know, I think uh, you're going to have to wait for Dr. Carnahan's, uh, one of his research courses to give you more detail, but it depends on your research questions. What you're going to set up, you're going to have a research project, a study, something you're interested in. You're going to set up, uh, you're going to develop research questions, you're going to develop a method, and then you're going to get your data, you're going to analyze it, and you're going to write your study. Uh, I will send, I'll include it um, somewhere, but maybe in the Dropbox if I can clean it up in time. So I've been working on for summer courses and, and dissertation students. It's just an overview of different directions to go in qualitative research. But what I did with it, though, I linked and I have in the box uh, the actual research articles that exemplify it. So case study research, actually stuff more, a little more particular. And actually, Dr. Zieger has a whole bunch of resources in her dissertation uh, course. So that's a great question, but the answer is a lot bigger than I can cover in, a, in you know, this is a technology workshop. And uh, again, this is an overview. I, you're, there's no way you're gonna remember everything I, I went over. I tried to just give a snapshot of, the, of getting started and the possibilities of the software. Um, the rest is really dependent on your research approach. So to answer your question, that's, that's a bigger, it's a good question, but it, it's a bigger answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Dr. Sandberg, I yes. see the value of multiple coders working on the same document to, to see whether you might get different codes um, yeah. across yeah. for the reliability. What if a person wants to work on one document and code and see each other's codes? Can you share? Yeah, there, there are different ways to do that. Um, there's actually a cloud version that you could do, or you could export, import the, um, the document, and you can hide the codes, and you can um, track, track the coders, too. So if someone else was coding it, uh, you, can, uh, you can see who's coded what and then compare them. Perfect. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a feature uh, of the software. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to teach us all about this. I realize there's so much to it, but you definitely gave us a great overview and it looks like a great tool. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it, again, I think you're gonna find people, you're gonna use it for, you're gonna have projects that you're like, hey, wait, Atlas TI does that, so uh, it could help me. I used it for a couple of uh, memos and lit reviews recently. All right, thank you so much, everybody.